As always, please pause the video and try the question before moving on. What we're going to do after reading the question is to try to draw a free body diagram of the rod. In our free body diagram, the red arrows are the forces acting on the rod. We have the tension pulling up on the rod. We have the weight of the ice cream shop sign pulling down on it. We have the weight of the rod itself pointing downward as well. And then since the rod is pushing to the left on the hinge, the hinge in response will push to the right. In addition, the rod is trying to slip down the side of the wall. In response to that, the hinge is going to push upward on the left end of the rod. So we've labeled that HY and HX, respectively. We've also labeled some of the distances. The entire rod is six meters long, so that's labeled. And then the weight of the rod, the 100 newtons, acts at its center. And so the distance would be three meters from the left end to the right end. We've also labeled the distance from the left end of the rod to the ice cream shop weight force as four meters. And the reason that that's four meters is as follows. The question notes that the sign is four meters wide. So from here to there would be four meters. Now, since the weight of the sign acts at its center, which would be about right there, that would be the center of the ice cream shop sign, that means that the distance to that weight the distance to the center of the sign would be two meters. And that's where this four meters is coming from, right? Because four meters plus the two meters would equal the entire six meter length of the rod. So it's important to note that four meters as you will see momentarily. Also notice over here that we have a right triangle. This angle here is 90 degrees. They've labeled this as 30. And from a little bit of geometry, we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. That would have to make this angle here 60. So I just want to make sure that we mark 60 degrees in our free body diagram. Now with all of that stated, we can proceed to the sum of the torques equaling zero equation. And the reason that that applies is because this rod is not spinning. It's not rotating. So we know that the sum of the torques is equal to zero. We also know that torque is equal to a force times a distance times the sine of an angle. The distance would be the distance from the force to the pivot point. You can see we've drawn the pivot right here at the left end of the rod. That's pretty customary. But the reason we do that is because HX and HY would be passing through that point. And since we have them passing through the point, we can eliminate them from the torque equation. So with all those ideas in mind, we're going to try to fill in the torque equation. For the 100 Newton force, since it's pulling the rod in a clockwise fashion, its torque will be negative. Same with the 500 Newton force. The tension force, on the other hand, is pulling the rod in a counterclockwise fashion, so that torque will be positive. So let's fill into the sum of the torques equation. So here's the torque from the 100 Newton force, the, and then the torque from the 500 Newton force, and then the torque from the tension. Notice the angles for the 100 and 500 Newton forces are 90. That's because those forces are acting perpendicular to the rod. So that's a 90 degree angle. The sine of 90 is actually one, so you can eliminate them. Go ahead and solve for tension, and that will solve part A of this question and you should get 443 newtons. Let's move on to part B. Let's find the horizontal component of the hinge force, which is HX, by noting the idea that the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to zero. The hinge force is an X force because it's pointing along the X axis. There actually is another force that's pointing along the X axis. It might not be clear, but if we look at the tension here, which we now know is 443 newtons, what we need to do is to break that tension into its x and y components. So as we can see, the x component would be pointing to the left and the y component would be pointing upward. And from a little bit of trigonometry, we should realize that the x component is 443 times the cosine of 60. And then the y component is 443 times the sine of 60. Once you break a force into its components, it's often helpful to get rid of the original force. We really just want to be working with the components at this point. So we can kind of erase this force right here and leave the components behind. So again, the forces in the x direction are hx and then the x component of tension. Let's fill them into this formula. Notice that the x component of the tension, the 443 cosine 60, has a negative sign in front of it because it's pointing to the left. Very easy to solve for hx at this point. Should get about 222 newtons and again that would be pointing to the right. Our last goal is to find the 
vertical component of the hinge force, which is HY. So that's what we're going to find next. And to do that, we're going to use the idea that the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. We have several Y forces. We have HY. We have the Y component of the tension. We have the downward weight of the rod and then the downward weight of the ice cream shop sign. So we'll fill those all in. Remember the downward forces will be negative. And then you should be able to easily solve for HY which turns out to be about 217 newtons and it's pointing upward as shown in the diagram.